So hi there, I'm Katie. And if we haven't met, uh, then you may not yet know that I live in Orlando, Florida. And I work at a college here in Orlando. And um, I really work kind of as an internal consultant in organizational development. So I work with our faculty and staff in particular on problem solving and collaboration, co-creation, and just um, really generally thinking about all the ways that we can um, serve each other and our students better. So I have uh, just one of the most amazing jobs in the world. I'm very lucky. Um, I came to the creativity world about six or seven years ago. Um, so I'm uh, still relatively new, but have been super lucky to learn from and be mentored by so many different um, members of the community. Um, so today I'm excited to share with you uh, something you may have heard of. Um, certainly um, you'll hear the parent of the tool, um, but this is, um, we're gonna go through uh, appreciative interviews, which is um, related to the concept of appreciative inquiry. Um, appreciative interview is specifically a tool um, in the liberating structures. So if that's not um, something you're familiar with, I will show you just a little bit about that first um, in the chat for those of you who are live. Um, I put the link to appreciative interviews. Uh, one of the wonderful things about liberating structures is all of their tools are open source and um, they make them all available to anyone interested in learning them. So let me share just Hang with, bear with me one quick second. And let me share with you uh, first, nope, wrong button, there we go. Um, so if you are new to Liberating Structures, um, these are their tools um, and they're constantly uh, looking for and redesigning designing new tools uh, with the explicit purpose of finding ways to have full inclusion. So their um, perspective is that um, there's no reason why everyone can't be involved in decision making, problem solving, um, thought processes. Um, and they've developed some tools and borrowed tools from other techniques to help people put together different ways of um, structuring and designing the conversations so that there can be um, inclusion. Um, so they have on their website, this um, menu is what they call it. And from there, you can click on each one. They give you the directions um, and give you some examples usually of how to use it. I will say my first venture into liberating structures, it took me a little while to uh, fully understand the way they describe and explain tools. Um, so give yourself, like if you read it and you're like, I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean, just uh, give it a little try um, because they're really easy to use once you kind of understand the way that they've written them. Um, they also have a free app so that you can have it on your phone or your device so that it's always available. Um, so some of these, as you're looking at them, you may recognize uh, either from work that you've done or um, recognize the names. Um, today, we're gonna focus on appreciative interviews. So in just a minute, you're going to be put into pairs. When you get into pairs, I'm gonna ask you to tell a story to your partner. Um, and you're gonna tell a story about a time when you had a positive experience co-creating on a team. So you can talk about what happened, who was there, what made it stand out. Um, don't worry, I'm gonna give you a minute, just a minute. Um, in just a minute, I'm going to give you a minute to think about the story you wanna tell so that you're prepared. But before we jump into that, I just wanna give you all of the information so that you're ready. So you're gonna tell your story to another person about the time you've had a positive experience co-creating. So when we say co-creating, we mean um, collaborating from nothing. So when we get together, we don't have a preformed idea or plan and we work together to co-create whatever it is that we're working on. So it is that um, um, all included with whomever is there, um, give and take to build something which didn't exist before we were together. So that's the 
a kind of a quick definition of that. Uh, so first of all, does this request make sense? Um, would anyone like clarification on what I mean by any of this? Okay, great. Yes. Uh, just a quick, quick question. A team can be a team of any size, can be a small team or a huge team, doesn't matter. It, uh, it does not matter to me. Um, whatever you have thought of, like whatever scenario comes to mind when you think about it, um, the key here is to talk about that positive experience. So even if you had, like if something's coming to mind where there were positive elements and less than positive elements, I want, you would want to focus on the parts that were felt really positive. Makes sense, but yeah, team can be two people. It can be 500 people. <clears throat> That's completely up to you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Great. Okay, uh, so while you are talking with one another, um, it's of course called appreciative interview. So one of you will be talking and the other will be listening. Um, so just a few tips when you think about this. Um, so sort of, interview techniques for this activity that will come in handy. So first and foremost, create a more intimate environment. So today we are virtual. Um, and so Zoom kind of creates a more intimate environment for you. Um, so in this instance, you'd want to have on your camera. Um, if you're in person, you would want to sit close together so that you can make eye contact and no multitasking. So you might be tempted to take notes on what the person is saying let all of that go. The whole purpose is to give someone your full attention and to listen to them without um, thinking about what you'd say in response or and even trying not to think about what you might say next. Um, so just kind of full in. So that kind of gets us into our second one, really focusing on the speaker. So some of us remember details and stories really easy, easily, and others of us need a little help. So if you are with someone who needs a little help, you can say things like, tell me more about that. Um, what we don't wanna go into is, oh yeah, I've experienced that too, let me tell you about my story. So um, as um, listeners, sometimes we hijack the conversation by wanting to share our experiences. Each of you have time to share. Um, so let's make sure to try to stay present on whomever is speaking at the time. And then third, um, you're going to just let your the back of your mind begin to do its own processing without paying a whole lot of attention to sort of listen for themes. So listening for moments that sound like themes of the story. In addition, you need to be ready to retell the story to other people. Now, here's the caveat. Once, you, once I'm done telling my story, if Nushin is my partner, I've told Nushin my story, whatever Nushin tells, is correct. There is no right or wrong to the retelling of the story. So um, if someone gets a detail wrong, no problem. There is no wrong here. Um, you're really hearing that other person's digested version of your story. Um, so once you've told your story, try to let it go. And as you're listening, try not to worry on, get, on being able to retell the story the way they told it. You're going to retell the story the way you heard it. Does that make sense? Questions about these kind of tips for how we're going to operate in the interview process. Okay, great. So let me go back to your question and I am gonna give you one minute um, to think however you want. So if for you thinking um, with a pen makes more sense and you have one there, please feel free to do that. Um, or if you just want to quietly let your brain go where it goes for a minute, that's great too. So we're just going to take some um, silent time and I'm going to set my timer. So you will also hear when one minute is up. So you're thinking about a time when you had a positive experience co-creating on a team and try to be as specific as possible. So try to think of one story. Okay, so that's your minute. Hopefully that called enough uh, to mine for the next part of our activity. So in a minute, you will go into a breakout room with 
Um, I think one other person, there might be, okay, everybody's in pairs, great. So you will be paired up with one other person. In that breakout room, you will each have two minutes to tell your story. So we will pipe through um, when we're halfway through that time so that you know the first person's two minutes are up and the second person's two minutes have started. In order to have the full two minutes, get into the room, say hello and greet one another, and then jump into your stories. You have a full two minutes. So if you finish your story in 40 seconds, your partner is gonna ask you questions like, tell me more and who was there and what else happened to help get more of that story out. We'll let you know when the two minutes is up and then we'll flip to the other person and do the same. Any questions so far? So it's a paired interview. Great. From there, your pair will join another pair. When you're in a group of four, and we'll have two groups of four, if I'm doing my math correctly, looking at the participants, you will go around the circle essentially, and each person will tell their partner's story. So it will, you'll each have one minute to retell the story. So I would retell Nushin's story in about a minute, and then we'd go to the next person and the next person and the next person. Um, when we're done, we'll pipe more directions into that uh, small group for you, okay? So it will go pairs, I'll even put it in the chat for you. Pairs, and you have two minutes each. So that's four minutes total. Then you'll be in small groups and you have one minute each. So again, the total of about four minutes. And then we'll give you the next set of directions. Questions? Okay, great. All right, then Nushin, when you are ready, Go into your groups and share your stories with one another. I know it can feel a little wonky being pulled back and forth. So thanks for <laughs> hanging with us. Um, what we are going to do next is um, you are welcome to either come off mute or type in the chat overlapping themes. So similar themes that you heard in more than one uh, of the stories. Um, and if you do come off mute, uh, which I definitely welcome, just tell us the themes. You don't have to tell us what happened to get to those themes. So you can just identify those themes. Uh, for instance, complementary roles is one example. What else? I would say uh, openness and acceptingness, acceptingness of difference. Openness and accepting of differences, great. I'm seeing build on each other's ideas, supportiveness, energy and openness, feeling energy, willingness to learn and grow, interactions between participants help build new ideas. Thanks for the correction. <laughs> Trial and error. Mutual support. Mutual support. Diversity in thinking, trial and learn. Great. So what we would do with these uh, engagement, thank you. Um, what we would do with these themes is say, um, as we go into co-creating, uh, so as a group, perhaps we are moving into a co-creation period, let's look at all of the ways that this has worked for us before. And now we have a whole list of things on which we can build to ensure that our next endeavor in co-creation is a positive one. So we can talk about how do we ensure that we have engagement and diversity in thinking and trial and learning and interactions. So it gives us a place on which to build so that we're sure that what we do next is also a positive experience. So that's appreciative interviews. Um, I, I really love this tool. I use it a lot. It helps people, um, helps warm people up and helps really get them in the mindset that we've done this before and we've done it well and we can do it again. So um, when something might seem like it's going to be difficult or when people might um, be hesitant that they're going to be able to do something well, appreciative interviews is a great way to remind them we've all been here before and we can do it. So. That's appreciative interviews.
Are there questions about that tool or clarification, anything else? <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is a wonderful tool, wonderful tool. And, you know, Mike, we, we, just at the end of our session, we talked about, um, you know, often things don't go well. And I, my sense is that, you know, that there's sometimes a reluctance to get into this kind of discussion because there's a problem to solve. You know, we all want to dig into the bump. And when we don't do that, things often go, go awry. When we do take even the shortest time to do what we've done here, you're absolutely right. It sets a tone, it raises issues which are important to think about. You don't have to resolve them, but just it starts to, you know, you're, you're, they're in your head and in your heart too. It's a huge thing. And yet we're so time driven, you know, like we're so crazy time driven that we think we can't afford that. Yeah. In the end, it's, you know, we probably lose more time by not having done something like this than by doing it. Yeah. So it's a real, what a, what a, a reinforcement of a, of a lesson. Thank you. You're welcome. I think so too. And um, if I suspect that a group might be more inclined to be um, comfortable pointing out all the things that have gone wrong before, then I make sure whatever story theme I give them is adjacent um, because it gets them there. They're less defensive about going to something kind of adjacent. So maybe we're talking about um, with co-creation, maybe we would talk about um, contribution or something, would find something adjacent so that they're not saying, oh, I've never had a positive experience with that. There's something that we can come to related to it where you have had a positive experience and, and then we can build on that. So, you know, different groups are different. Some, some groups are, are um, talented in pointing out how things could go wrong quickly um, and others are more talented in pointing out how things could go well quickly. And they both offer a lot, um, but we can spend a lot of time harping on what's not gonna work. Um, rather than designing what might work. So. It might be that the component that you drop into the middle of the situation is the role of a facilitator. In our case, the team would have just sit there and babbled at each other and banged each other's head for a long time. And I knew if we didn't get going on the right track, we'd be in trouble. So I took over almost demanding that they listen to me as a facilitator and here's my role and here's how it's gonna work. Yeah. we're going to do this instrument and i think that might be common among a lot of these so-called bringing together two different forces and we put somebody in the middle who can manage manage to ride the horses you know. i will say liberating structures is really designed to allow groups to self-facilitate because it's um, their idea is on democratizing so that it is self-driven and so it's something that's common that you'll see in there um but I understand what you're saying also. Mm -hmm. I'll say I use liberating structures a lot and um, people don't always get there in the same ways, but they almost always get there. And one of my ways of thinking about that is if you had a conversation about something totally different, but felt connected at the end, you're probably still better equipped for whatever's gonna happen next. Um, so, uh, I, when I use liberating structures, I usually use them as that opportunity to set up a, a relational foundation, because then whatever I'm going to ask you to do is going to be pretty highly facilitated, and you're more likely to go there because at least you have one person who you've chatted with, or in this case, three other people. So I get what you're saying completely, and I think it would maybe matter on the subject that you've got and how important it is to get to a specific ending with it. Great, thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you all for thank being you. here and try it out. I can't wait to hear how it works for you. So perfect. Thank you so much, Katie. Very, very useful. Well, well, well presented too.